This video will demonstrate how to take old and worn out engine cover finishes and make them look brand new again using spray can paint. There are a couple of things I want to point out before we get started. First of all, a paint job is 95% preparation, 5% paint application. The second thing is getting good color match, whether it's matching the desired color you like or, in this case, matching the original engine color. Color match starts with shooting some of the selected color on a piece of cardboard, for instance, and then comparing it in the same light with what color you desire. In this case, our last consideration is, are we going to keep the decals? They're rather expensive to replace. So, we're going to demonstrate how to keep the decals. With that, let's get started with masking off the decals. First, start out with a masking tape that's designed for this purpose. Too tough a tape, and you'll tear the decal off at the end. Next, you'll notice I'll take and lay the masking tape down along an original edge to cut down on my trimming. Secondly, you'll find that I use my fingernail to define the edges of the decal to help assist in the trimming. And I use an X-Acto knife in this case, or use a straight edge razor to do the trimming, and a sharp one at that. Once the masking is complete, we move on to the next phase, which is prepping the original painted surface for the primer coat. I choose to start by using a 220 grit sandpaper to rough sand the surface. Heads up, this is not a hard sanding. This is just to rough up the original surface so the next layer of paint will bond better to it. And also notice I stay away from the edges through all sanding processes. Trust me, they'll get sanded whether you like it or not. Another thing, avoid hard sanding these areas where the paint has gone completely and some of the fiberglass material is showing. The exposed glass fibers will lay down as we apply layers of primer coat, so don't worry about them at this point. If your cover has any damages, nicks, gouges, scratches, etc., it would be at this stage that you would fix them using some sort of a Bondo filler. To finish this rough sanding process, I use a medium to coarse napped steel wool, which greatly assists in getting in and around the edges of the decals and also to cover the entire engine cover before moving on to the next step. Once complete, we should have an entirely dull surface. And from here, we go on to our last and final step prior to shooting our primer. The final step involves cleaning the engine cover surfaces. We do this by wetting down a clean rag slightly with lacquer thinner, and then we wipe the entire engine cover surfaces with the rag without stopping. That's it. We are now ready to start spraying our primer coat. Before we get started on the painting process, I want to do a little a spray paint 101. You've heard of wax on, wax off? Well, same with paint. Paint on, paint off. Making sweeping actions six to eight inches away from the surface, and at each end of the sweep, turn the paint off, and once the can is moving back the other direction, turn the paint on. I recommend practicing this technique on something like a five gallon bucket. That way you're forced to make a change in the can's position to keep that six to eight inches. And here are a few other considerations. Do this process in a very well ventilated area at a proper temperature, somewhere around 70 degrees, not too hot, not too cold, not too humid. Wear a mask and start the paint project from the top and move down to help eliminate overspray. Now let's get started with the actual painting process itself. It's a three part process. All three paints, the primer, the color, and the clear coat have to be compatible paints. So make sure that you've done that before you get started. Between each paint application, there'll be a wet sanding before applying the next layer of paint. I'm starting with a fast drying primer coat that's compatible with my color coat. I am going to apply two good solid coats of primer before I do a wet sand and repeat the process. Notice I make sure that the edges get extra coverage of paint. Once complete, we allow it to dry as per the instructions on the can and move on to the wet sanding. Kind of like the rough sanding, the wet sanding starts out with a 220 grit wet sanding paper and is followed up with a 600 grit wet sanding paper. We will finish with a fine nap steel wool. Clean with a lacquer thinner as we did earlier and apply the second coat of primer. This last sanding of the primer coat needs to be a little bit more particular. Uh, this is the last step to correct any errors prior to putting color coat on. So we start out with the 220 grit lightly standard paper, follow up mostly with the 600 grit. And we're looking for imperfections in the paint using the critical light and making sure those are all smoothed out so it's polished virtually smooth. Then the last bit of polished sanding we'll do is with a very fine napped steel wool. 
We know we're finished with this step when the surfaces of the engine cover look perfectly smooth and shiny when wet in critical light. A quick wipe off with lacquer thinner, and now let's move on to applying the color coat. Save being finished using lacquer thinner and 220 grit wet sanding paper, this process of applying the color coat is identical to painting the primer coat. Two good full coats of paint, each followed by a wet sanding prior to putting on the clear coat. Same painting rules apply. Start from the top, move down, keep the can moving, paint on, paint off, extra paint on the edges, and fix all sags or runs in the sanding process. Note, for this size engine cover, I ended up using about two cans of paint per coat. That's primer, color, and clear coat. You will notice variations in the shade of this color coat. Not to worry, it'll work out in the sanding process. Just make sure that you've got a good, complete coverage of the color coat. Now moving on to the wet sanding of our color coat, we're going to use just the 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Stay away from the edges, remember. And then we're going to follow it up with a polishing of our very fine napped steel wool. Once we have a uniformly dull surface, we're going to prep the surface without using lacquer thinner. This time we'll just use a damp cloth to get the heavy material off, followed up by a tack cloth which will rub gently all over the engine to remove any debris or dust. Now, on to shooting the last coat of color. Keeping in mind your ability to repair errors become less and less as we move on with this project, so be careful on these last few coats. After completing the last coat of color and allowing it to dry, I follow it up with a polishing of superfine steel wool. Once this is complete, you may even find minor little surface scratches that you think are going to show up in the final paint job. Trust me, they won't. And to complete this step, we use our tack cloth once again to gently remove all dust and debris from the engine cover surfaces. Now on to applying our clear coat. All painting rules apply. This is the stage in which you have virtually no ability to recover from drips or sags. Just leave them. And once again, we are going to apply two good coats of clear, but this time with no sanding in between. They'll pretty much just be back to back coats. Once the clear coat has been applied, this is what the finished product should look like. The last step is removing the decal masking. I recommend you do this when the paint has become dry to touch and avoid touching the engine cover painted surfaces. Use an X-Acto knife or a straight edge cutting device to score the edges of the decal to make sure you get a nice clean separation of the masking tape from the paint job. Any overspray you find on the decal can easily be cleaned up with a cloth lightly wetted with lacquer thinner. That's it. You should be finished and you should have what looks like a professionally repainted engine cover.